young singer named Justin Moore. We don't do a whole lot of bullshitting up here. We just get up here and play country music. Hey guys, today's podcast is sponsored by Bobcat Company. Check them out at bobcat.com. Hey, hey, check one, two. Check, check, one, two. I think it's working. Here we go. Bus cast number two. Welcome, everybody, back to this week's installment of the Justin Moore Podcast. I'm your old buddy, old pal, J.R. the Handler. And with me today on his bus, Razorback One, is your favorite singing Razorback all the way from Pennsylvania today, Mr. Justin Moore. Glen, Glen Moore? Glen Moore, Pennsylvania. Glen Moore, yeah. Yep. Uh, well, I think we're over near Philly. About an hour from Philly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, tuning in, guys. Uh, good to be back with you. I know we're a day or two late. Yeah. So we apologize for that. But, uh, you know, trying to trying to um, get all this stuff figured out from the road. And, man, we have been busier than ever in my career. I mean, really. Um, I think we might have talked last week. We did uh, 11 shows in 16 days. But JR and I left – a little over three weeks ago now i think and uh we were back in arkansas for four days um yeah we we left home the last time we were anywhere near home really for any length of time was uh, august 4th okay and it's august 27th as we record this today right so so we were home uh for four days uh but we had stuff going on all four days and now we're back out this is day two of being back out or three and um we're out for another almost three weeks so uh we will have been i will have been at my house like four days and six weeks and you haven't been yeah i don't know what my house looks like yeah anymore. exactly so um but we'll get into what we did uh today uh, we'll get into what we did back home we did some really neat stuff for, oh yeah uh, some charity stuff yep. and then some some stuff uh, for the next album which will be coming soon we talked about that um, so we'll get into that today uh, but uh, glad to have you guys back with us we're playing a show tonight actually with one of our uh, our best buddies and uh, our very first podcast guest first podcast guest uh, Brantley and so it'll be fun to catch up with him uh, uh, t- today and tonight and play a show together it's been years since we have i know it's, it really so, literally has been years literally. we always say that it feels like years but it has literally been years since we did a show with bg yeah and we toured when i first started working for you we did several tours together yeah and uh some one of my i'm sure we talked about this off air one of my some of my favorite touring ever is touring with those guys i just his tour manager jeff and i are good buddies all his crew i mean just it's just we get along you and him are great buddies so yeah. it just works out i actually saw him earlier and um, he said, if you uh, if we he asked what time we were going to leave, so if you're here tonight in Glenmore, PA, which this will air too late for you to hear this, but uh, maybe find some YouTube clips because uh, Justin's probably going to get up and do Small Town Throwdown with yeah. BG tonight. So yeah, I, you know it's funny we for, I forget about that song, but we had a top five record yep, sure on that did. on that song, and uh, myself and him and and Tr and so yeah, I, I've seen and uh, hung out with Brantley. We've hung out. We played golf you know a couple of months back right hung out in florida but uh we hadn't played a show together and like i said years so it'll be good to do that and uh last night we were in ash ashland ashland virginia. virginia um really neat deal another charity thing um seemed like we've done a lot of that lately which is not a bad thing at all nope um but we did a um uh a show last night at a harley davidson uh place um maybe the nicest harley store i've ever seen in my life yeah it was for sure huge and sprawling and um it was like a campus or something you, yeah you know? it was a nice nice building with a stage and all that set up on one an observation deck and everything set up on one end of it um for bands to play and i know they said they've had tracy lawrence there yeah. and a couple other of our buddies and um yeah it was for the uh, 50 tiki foundation which they raise money um for down um police officers and their families so um, if an officer uh, was hurt and couldn't work for a while, they come in and help them. Or uh, they were telling a story last night of uh, uh, an officer whose house caught fire, didn't have right insurance, so they got some money to get them on their feet so they get going. So, yeah, it was awesome. Big, good crowd. It was yeah, hot. It was, it was a warm it one. It was hot. Yeah, it was 
Uh, but yeah, it was really, really cool. Um, and uh, before we get going today, don't want to get into it, but just want to say, speaking of police officers and servicemen and women, our, our thoughts and prayers go out to all those um, those men and women over overseas right now who are dealing with just some some terrible stuff. Um, and and their families back home who I'm sure are just kind of losing their minds right now and uh, so don't want to get into that really but do want to touch on it and say uh, we're thinking about all of those men and women and praying for them yep definitely pray for our troops boys and girls they need it um, yeah like I said we, we wanted to get this done on Thursday I hope my updates um, came and everybody saw them I know some people hit me up on my uh, Twitter page and Instagram page and I just try to direct you guys if you haven't already the best way to get any of these updates because we're going to try to let you know as we go when we're going to drop them if it's not going to be on Thursday we'll give you an update like I did this week uh, go to the Justin Moore podcast Instagram page um, it's that simple Justin Moore podcast on Instagram follow that page because that's where we're going to send all of our updates to there uh, yeah. put the videos out on it this week to give you updates and yeah we were going to try to get it done but like Justin said, we we got home. We flew home from Montana last Saturday. Then Sunday we had the Justin's inaugural St. Jude Golf Tournament in Little Rock, which we um, had to do the dinner and the opening invitation for everybody Sunday night. Um, did a performance, played some songs. The Governor Hutchison was there. Yeah. It, was, it was really cool. And all the people from St. Jude and all our friends from Arkansas we got to see. and. I got to meet the great Joe Klein. <laughs> Didn't get to get a picture. You know, I don't fan up much, but y'all, any basketball fans out there remember the great Joe Klein? He was an Arkansas Razorback legend, but went on to have a great career in the NBA. Was on the uh, documentary last year um, with Jordan and all that. He stuff. was on the Olympic team. And on the Olympic team. Yeah. I mean, he just. Uh, so anyway, I got to meet him, but I, he slipped out and I didn't get the picture. So, Joe, I'm coming to get that picture <laughs> next time we do an event together. But uh, yeah, a lot of cool people. My buddy Zach Hodgins, uh, uh, Zach Hawker from former Razorback, played for the Saints. <laughs> Got to catch yep. up with him. Quinn Grovey. Quinn Grovey, the great <laughs> Quinn Grovey. Got to talk to him about uh, maybe you and I jumping on his podcast yep. and him coming on ours at some point. So, yeah, it was a great event. Uh, did that that night. The next day you had the golf tournament bright and early. Yeah. And uh, it was a warm one there again. Um, but uh, had a great time at that visit with everybody. And, yeah, I don't know. If, might as well tell you. Raised over 300 thousand dollars for the St. Yeah. Yeah. So, so for those out there listening that don't know, uh, country music, uh, one of the – proudest things i think uh, for for myself being a part of country music is they do a lot um with saint jude which is uh saint jude children's research hospital and in, in uh in memphis but uh i mean their reach is is all over the country and beyond and and so it's a really really special place i've visited there a number of times um and I was approached a couple, well, I guess about three years ago now, uh, about uh, being the namesake for a golf tournament in Little Rock benefiting St. Jude's. And, of course, I was, I was honored to, to, to be able to, you know, do that. And, I, obviously, I, I was all, all on board. And so uh, we – set the wheels in motion at that time we were planning on doing this and i believe it was the spring of 2020 may i think we were shooting for may yeah originally. and so obviously with covid and all that we we didn't have the opportunity to do that then so we we pushed it back i, th I think we changed the date literally five or six times yeah. and so um we were finally able to do it and so you know i, I was a little apprehensive about the success of it because of that you know and and the fact that uh, all the folks that showed up that did I, i'm certainly beyond appreciative of and um yeah to raise three hundred thousand with the difficulties navigating through this that we had was just amazing yeah. um and so thanks to all the folks out there who were a part of it um uh, and the people from saint jude were just phenomenal I mean, it gives me chills it, thinking about what all they it, do and it how was, good a job they do. It was really, really well organized and well put together, and it was just awesome. Um, and so, yeah, we we as you said, we had a dinner and a uh, we played a show, an acoustic show, the first night, kind of a gala type thing yeah. or whatever, silent auction and that kind of stuff, and then um, and then we played the 
the golf tournament the next day i tied for first in my flight because i had an absolute just stud, stud on yeah. my team i had nothing to do with it but then we lost with a tiebreaker but uh, but yeah it was like 100 degrees that day Easy. and we did it from like 10 to 2 which we got to do it in like october <laughs> next year right. i mean i like warm weather but it, i thought i was gonna pass out right. i really did and every third hole they had they had ice chests no water it was all full of beer and i'm like <laughs> I, I i i need i just need water yeah i love I beer need but some water. i need some water right yeah, now. yeah it was just it was unreal uh but it was awesome so yeah that was what we did the first couple of days and then uh, the the next couple of days, uh, I had songwriters yep. at my house, uh, and we wrote for like eight hours each day. Got four really good songs, I think. Um, some of which you'll hear on the next album, and and I've had people ask me, I don't know when that'll be out, um, but it will be. I would say late this year or early next year. The newest single, the next single uh, for us, will be from that album, and. We recorded that song. Um, it's gonna be a love song. We hadn't had a love song out in a while. Uh, we recorded that uh, about a week ago, nice. and so uh, I'm excited about that too. And I think that comes out next month, I believe. Right. And I tell you how you can make sure you know when it is. You can um, like, uh, rate, and subscribe to the Justin Moore podcast, and hit the notification so you know when it comes out <laughs> each week. Because the exclusive on the exact date we will drop on the Justin Moore podcast, even if. The publicist and management sends us something saying don't release this date. Oh, we're dropping it on the oh, podcast. Yeah, it's yeah. coming out on the podcast. So yeah, no doubt about it. Y'all make sure to tune in for that. Use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. I've got some questions uh, and some comments I'll get to here in a little bit. Thank you guys for always doing that and sending us stuff, uh, staying engaged with us. It's really what makes this thing roll um, like it does. And uh, we're going to try to get ahead of it and get next next week's out on time on Thursday. We're actually um, – we'll go through what the last shows we did and the shows we're about to do. Um, next week, but uh, between now and then, when the, as this airs, we're going to go hold up at a campsite somewhere because we've got to do a show Monday at the New York State Fair in Syracuse. Yeah. So it's too far for us to get back home uh, for any length of time. So we're going to stay out. We're going to go hold up at a anonymous KOA campsite somewhere on the bus and shoot a podcast from there. So next week, we're hoping to get in the can and have it out on time. But uh, yeah, hey, to to, to our credit, I, I, well, let's pat ourselves on the back. I think this is the first time we've been late in a long time. You know, oh, yeah. when we first yeah. got started with this thing, we, 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 uh, it was rough for a bit because we were trying to figure stuff out, and a lot of uh, a lot of being on the road too is dependent upon our internet. Yeah, if we can get it uploaded in time, and so y'all bear with us. But um, I think it's the first time we've been late in a long time. Yeah. So so cut us a little slack right. out there um, because, like I said, we may be. You know, we may be in an arena and have great internet, or we may be out in a pasture like we are today, and you just never know. Right. And so, and obviously, our travel determines that as well. So, and some of the guest stuff we want to do. You know, we might have to wait a day to tee up them and get them on time. Wanted to try to do some stuff today. I was hoping to get BG over here to jump on for a second since he was our first uh, guest, but we I got to get another camera for out here, and we got to do a new setup for the mic. So this is our second bus cast so um we're still trying to work out the kinks as far as that goes too yeah, but we're, we're getting it figured out and speaking of guests we got a we got a couple of guests lined up uh here in the near future i don't know specifically the the weeks uh, or the dates i know we've got them locked in but off the top of my head i don't know but we're gonna have um just to let you guys know uh upcoming we're gonna have an episode with parker mccollum yep uh who's Texas guy that now is a national guy just had a, a huge record last year um, uh, his first big huge national single I don't even know if that went number one but I would be surprised if it did yeah, he's on I'm fire. sure it did mm -hmm. but uh, I think he's gonna be a superstar I really do good guy met him at uh, Tracy's golf tournament right. actually <laughs> and then another guy who we're really good friends with and toured with is that 17 or 18? Yeah, the American um, Made Tour. I yeah. think it was 18. Um, Lee Bryce is is, is, is going to uh, come on with us here. And, again, I'm not just saying we may get them. We have them locked into dates. I just don't yeah, know the specific September dates. Yeah, um, September-ish. Um, we're going to try to get <clears> those <throat> on and then a couple others. But, yeah, and, and Lee, you know, Lee and our I guess we had a few months ago, Carly had a huge – I mean, one huge of the songs song. of the year maybe last year. I think it did win awards, yeah. actually. Yeah, it was huge. And uh, – 
And yeah, he, he just had a, a another big song by himself. I guess it was last year or this year, maybe this year. Uh, one of them girls. Yeah, was huge. yeah, yeah. That was earlier this big, year. Big, big record. Um, and he's so a hoot. So that ought he's to be a character. Fun. We'll have to get him to tell some stories about. So when we were touring together, he's got this wall in his bus, like maybe over here you can't see, but, um, and it's just full of holes. Yeah, it's kind of like yeah, it's that. It's like just this. not brick. Yeah. But uh, full of like, it just looks like it's been shot with a shotgun. Yeah, or just something. all marred up. Yeah, just. yeah, just yeah and i'm like what in the world and i walk in his bus after the show one night and he's throwing knives open knives into this wall like it's his hobby on the bus he just literally standing here throwing a knife as hard as he possibly yeah. can the first time I went on there it was him and enzo his manager We're like, taking turns do? throwing <laughs> knives at the wall so i'm about half cocked and i was like i gotta throw one i throw it up there and throw a dinger and just bounce it off the wall and lee looks at me and i was like ah, that's it i'm done but yeah but they were knife they were they have a i mean i don't think it's made for that but they have a wall they practice no throwing it knives. wasn't made for that they have a wall they practice throwing knives at like it is, so the funny one of the funniest things i've ever seen thankfully he was throwing it away from where you walk right. in the bus not towards where you're walking yeah. in because we had no idea we're yeah. like what in the world and, he's got, and, he, and he records and they do stuff late at night on his bus yeah. he had recording equipment and stuff yeah, it looked like a studio a studio and they're just throwing knives <laughs> over top of gear into the wall so we'll ask we have to ask him where how that originated and where the, the, the character the, now i guess they just practice it up in case some rando runs on the bus and can take so, them out yeah, be, don't walk up on his bus yeah. i promise he's you. a big old boy too i probably would run up on him boy. anyway but but, we'll talk to him about football season too you know he played at clemson yeah. he was a I think a deep snapper at Clemson. Yeah. And big Clemson fan, obviously. And so he's had some good years here the last, I don't know, eight, ten years. He's been a pretty happy camper, yes, I'm sure. Yes, Lord. And hopefully, hopefully uh, unfortunately for him, hopefully we'll steal Dabo when, hey, when Saban hey, hangs yeah. it up. We'll have to break his heart. But, uh. Hey, speaking of football, it's coming up, man. Right I mean, here. I think uh, Arkansas is eight days away from playing. I guess Alabama yeah. would be the we same. the same day. Yeah, we, uh, <laughs> Same day, different times. But. Yeah, and so that's exciting. We'll, uh, we're going to actually, we mentioned Quinn Grovey. We're going to do his podcast, and for Razorback fans out there, I don't think anybody else would care. If you if you do, then check it out also. But it's called uh, the Razorback Daily Podcast. They do it, I think they do a half hour each day. It's him and our um, uh, Matt Zimmerman. Razorback fans will know who that is. Uh, but uh, he was a longtime assistant basketball coach, and Still works for the university's color analyst for uh, basketball. Quinn is now, after his great career at Arkansas playing quarterback, um, he's the color analyst for football. So um, they do a really cool little podcast. So Razorback fans, check that out. But uh, we're going to have him on and talk about uh, football also because, again, he's the color analyst and really has his uh, he has the uh, his finger on the pulse yeah. as well as anybody up up that way and then we're going to try to get also uh, somebody from alabama's program on so we kind of preview i know you guys out there may not care about arkansas and alabama but we do That's so right. uh maybe uh kind of cool to yeah, kind of get different perspectives and just all over college and pro football we've we've talked with some uh, we've got some guys buddies that are professional re nfl referees and coaches and ball players and just got to work out everybody's schedule like ours theirs is busy as is all get yeah. out right now too with everything changing so but yeah we got a lot of fun stuff like that coming up um hopefully we can get some of these uh guys and gals on um to talk about some of that and may have something to drop later on talking about uh football um got an email this morning about maybe some uh texas arkansas game day stuff you might be on tv so we're trying to work through yeah. that so y'all stay it's, tuned and speaking of tv um I was supposed to be on Fox and Friends this morning. Um, I know I've had a bunch of people ask me about it over the last couple of days. And um, unfortunately, with the, the stuff that's going on, um, their programming changed to cover all that, which is certainly understandable. But that's being moved to another date. So just stay tuned. We'll tell you here. Uh, obviously, check my socials. We will be on, on uh, Fox and Friends coming up shortly. But uh, as JR mentioned, maybe a certain sec show that travels around to one particular place each each week during football season they may be in fayetteville possibly uh for the arkansas texas game week two and we possibly may be 
uh, there as well, working together on some stuff. So yeah. we got to we got to move some things around. We, we're supposed to be in Iowa that night, so it's going to be a little tricky. But uh, I know, and we had talked to Matthew McConaughey about us hooking up during the game because I think he's planning on making yeah. a trip. But we've got a show that night in Iowa, <laughs> so don't know how it's going to work but we're going to yeah. try so if we don't get to hang that time we're going to have to take his offer next time we play in texas we will make sure that we get that saturday's yeah. free next year so you know we have i knew we had it coming up soon you know we have football tomorrow and i'm talking big time football is that the nebraska illinois that's a big 10 game first game of the year that's tomorrow uh tomorrow as this airs this yeah. should be the day oh yeah yeah, yeah it's so should, when this airs, today i today. guess for you guys but uh, I'm intrigued by that game because uh, our former head coach and good friend of mine still, uh, Brett Bielema, is now the head coach at Illinois. Is he? So that'll be his first game. Ah, did he put uh, that together? Back in college because, you know, he's been in the pros ever right. since he left us. And uh, had he, hell, he won a ring with New England. Yep. And now he's back in the college game. He grew up in Illinois. So, Makes um, sense. And, hell, he won, th I think, three Big Ten titles in a row. Went to three Rose Bowls in a row. So, um, obviously pulling for him to, to do well. Yeah, shout um, out to Coach B. Just and talked Jim. to him recently. Yeah. Um, he's got two little girls doing really good. And um, So, right before COVID hit, we had lunch together up in Boston, maybe, uh, that area. And uh, but glad glad he's back in the game. He's a, he's a really good coach, in my opinion, and uh, just a great personality. I mean, he's got a big – big personality which i think is fun for the game but yeah there's there's two games tomorrow it's the, them and then uh, hawaii ucla but man just think about <clears throat> if you played uh an sec game your first game oh my god i mean yeah uh, it's gotta i mean not only are you coming back to the game but oh by the way your first game is nebraska and nebraska has struggled for a while but under Scott Frost, I think this is the first year where maybe I think it's his third year, maybe the first year they feel like they have depth and they have the his players and that. Right. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Go get them. Go get them. I em. mean, yeah. yeah, you're right off the bat, man. So. Yeah. So yeah, and it so it's here. It's I mean, by I mean, the time this yes. airs, this there will be college football. Happening. And we're off tomorrow again today. Yep. So we get to go watch football. Absolutely, that's I mean, gonna be awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. So yeah, looking forward to a. Uh, uh, great season hope i i say this all the time you know I, I i i several teams because of historic rivalries that i'm not a big fan of being an alabama fan but i still don't want anybody to get hurt or injured no, no. or i want you know in this COVID stuff i just want everybody to be healthy and happy and make the best of their college days and career and move on speaking of um, there's your boy jalen yep. hurts jalen hurts i got him on my fantasy team shout out to everybody who uh, the people who thought my fantasy team was good and the ones that think I'm crazy, we'll see y'all at the end of the season and see how crazy I am. Roll damn tide. Uh, <laughs> speaking of guests, too, I just got a text. Um, the show we're doing today actually has some buddy of ours on it. Obviously, we know BG, our old buddy Hot Rod, Rodney Atkins, is on. Oh, tonight. yeah, I forgot Rodney was on, on the this. show with us today. And sure one of my him on. Yeah, I know. And one of my favorite um, duos, groups, uh the young guns, I guess you'd say. I've been watching these guys for a long time, and I actually thought about it because he just texted me. It popped on my thing. Is the Muscadine Bloodline guys uh, from Alabama, from Mobile area. They're on the show with us today, too. So when we get off this, I'm going to go find Charlie and Gary and say hey to them. And I'm going to get them on the podcast, too. I was waiting on new music. I know they got something coming out soon. So I'm going to talk with them about that today. So um, I will have them on at some point as well. Uh, it should be fun. But before we go any farther, I was thinking we could go back and just – briefly talk about the shows we did after the last podcast before the golf tournament we were in um which it was wild we were still on the west coast and uh the first one we did was in redding california which is not far from where the fires were and it was smoky it was great crowd we had a good time but it was uh it was yeah we talked about some of those early ones last week when we were in in california yeah. we were off in those days in in monterey and boy i missed that weather yeah um <laughs> But, um, yeah, we haven't talked about the ones right. after our we break got up, there. Yeah, we got up to Redding, and, yeah, it was smoky. It was a little better, they said it had been. And there was a lot of people with their uh, horses and stuff camped out in the parking lot of the venue because uh, they had to get evacuated from some of the towns near there. Uh, and Is stuff. that that really cool um, uh, uh, fairgrounds? Uh, Is that the, the – you remember – The big one? That yeah. was kind of a weird stage setup. Right. No, that was in Oregon. Oh, okay. That was the next night. 
uh, Redding was at the auditorium there. Oh, okay. Boy, yeah, that was really – you could smell the smoke yeah. there. That was the first one I, to me. I woke up at like – I think it was like 4 o'clock in the morning on the bus. Um, and I thought our bus was on fire. And I've been on a bus that has caught on fire, so that's not anything that w- wouldn't be – it's not out of the realm of possibility um, for for you to smell smoke. Right, and, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, I get up and ask the driver, I'm like – He's like, no, it's it's all around us. I was like, oh, okay. That's how strong it was. Right. I mean, we were in the bus, all the windows up, closed, all that, but crazy. Humidifiers going. And when we keep... got, yeah, I'm sorry, but no. when we got to the venue, it was still, I mean, you're inside, everything's closed, still smells like nothing but smoke. So it, it's kind of a weird vibe it, feeling, yeah. you know. And then, you feel, and then, you know, we, we gave out a bunch of comp tickets that we had to some of the people in the parking lot that were just stuck there and uh, ended up being a great show. And, yeah, the next morning, I didn't realize it was bad during that day. I don't smell good anyway. My sinuses are always jacked up. But the next day, I got out of my bunk and put my shirt on from the night before and could sm- it smelled just like a campfire. I could tell mm-hmm. that was when I noticed, like, wow, it was strong because yeah. it was so thick on my shirt even the next morning when we were in um, Redmond, Oregon, up near Bend, Redmond, Oregon area, where we did the second show, which you referred to, with yeah. the cool fairgrounds. It was um, the nicest, cleanest fairgrounds I've ever seen ever, in my life. Like the pl- stuff, most everything. plush grass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah remember the grass? Remember the, yeah, it was, it was like, I mean, you could have laid on it. Yeah. To, yeah, it was, I, I know we sound crazy out there, but I, I think of campgrounds as just being dirty-ass corn dogs everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, at the fair, yeah. This was like the the nicest fair i, I, yeah, I don't know Dutchess how to county it. fairgrounds near it redmond was, oregon if you're up that way that's the that's the fairgrounds to go to yeah, it was i clean. mean it was had beautiful a little, had a little babbling little brook creek, going through yeah the thing yeah stuff. it was really it, it was looked deep. like a koa or something yeah that's and, what the, it looked and like. the grass I mean, almost looked fake it was thick yeah it i was, wish i had it in my yard we all said that that day it was like god we need this grass at home i you know where i live is the, i call it the land of a thousand grasses because i have so many different ones but the, it was just this yeah. thick it was almost like a rug it was it was nice and uh, the people were great there um thanks to all those uh guys and gals that made those two shows happen and uh, yeah it was a lot of fun it was a kind of a unique thing because they were supposed to be somewhere else because of the smoke they moved it here and we had a clear day that day it was actually nice yeah. weather um, to do that one and then our next one we went to is one of our favorite one of mine I know and it's one of the most serene cool places was the uh, Kettle House Amphitheater up outside of Missoula Montana which has a, the, the uh, I think it's the Blackwater or the uh, it's a river that runs right behind the amphitheater it's on a brewery it's 10 miles south of Missoula uh, just a real cool amphitheater sold out I mean it was just it was super cool super it's, cool it's one of my top it may be top five yeah favorite venues mm-hmm. um for me yeah in the country it's um i don't know it may hold what four thousand people yeah, something, something like, like that. that but it is uh if you're in that area you, you really need to go mm-hmm. see a show there or if you're within a couple of hours i mean it is it's just picturesque yep. i mean it looks like a postcard the the backdrop for the for the stage like it I mean, it looks like a postcard. Yeah, I don't know really what else does. to say. I mean, I put a, it, it, it's, maybe it's Cody pretty could, amazing. Maybe Cody will pipe in a few pictures that I had up, and I had some <clears> on my Instagram page. of Because it's just it's, – I stood out there on the little back deck, and I'm looking at the bus, and, yeah, the river and the mountains. It was like, <laughs> i got to take a picture of this. This is just – it's beautiful. And if you do, um, we'll, again, we'll keep you posted on when Fox and Friends will air. The the interview portion will be live. But we re- we recorded our, um, our uh, performance there. Yeah. So, if if you see that, that's what we're talking about. The backdrop of that performance, that's that venue. Yeah, so. it looked really cool. I saw some of the stuff Jeff and Cody had put yeah. together. That's going to be awesome when it does come out. So, yeah, yeah we'll keep you updated really on neat. that when the Fox and Friends does drop. Uh, but that was our three shows we had after the last time uh, you heard us on, on the air. and on the. Um, if you saw us on YouTube, which we encourage everybody, go check us out on YouTube, too. I know that we're working through the camera angles and stuff for the bus, but uh, y'all check us out on there, too um because that you know that, that that too when you like and subscribe and watch it on there that just helps us uh, keep this thing going and i mean and quite honestly video and this stuff is is hard for us i mean to get it uploaded probably the hardest part is figure the out file. the uh figure out the uh camera angles and stuff and so um but we do that for you guys because i know a lot of people wanted a video component to this so go take advantage of it since we're doing we're putting in the work to do it um 
And hey, if you don't want to watch it, we'll just stop doing it. It's yeah. a lot easier well, to do it And I'll tell you this out. too, if you, have you, if you have YouTube, it'll play in the background. So you can watch it even if you're listening to it. And when you, you know, if, if you have YouTube running on your phone or whatever, it'll keep playing even though if it's the screen's black. It doesn't have to be popped up. Right. right? But I know like last week's show, I believe, last week's show, for instance, um, you know, we, we had talked about we're going to start taking pictures on the road and staying, incorporating them into the video. I believe Cody did that yep. last week. So, you know, we were talking about um, the big redwoods and the seals that we saw and just different stuff yeah. like that. That's included in the vid- video last week, and yep. we're going to continue to do that. So, you know, the, some of the stuff we're talking about, you're not only going to just see us talking about it and interacting, but you'll actually see if we're talking about yeah, we went and saw this big redwood forest or the, this or that. We actually got pictures on there that will flash on the screen right. also. So. And when we have guests, obviously they're on there as well. Right. And, um, you know, we're talking about guests. We may pop their picture up. Or definitely when we see Lee or next time I'm around his bus, I'm getting a picture of his wall. And we're gonna oh, put, yeah. We'll put that up there in his show. But things like that. So, yeah, check it out on YouTube um, as well because that helps us. And, yeah, like I said, the camera angles and the getting the stuff because – We've said before, it's just Justin and I and Cody, our producer, friend, co-worker, Cody, that put this together. We don't have not some production. No, we don't have a team. We're not incorporated with any specific outlet to to put these together and doing them for. This is just uh, us putting them together for you guys and gals out there in podcast land, uh, country music fans, music fans in general, um, for y'all to enjoy. And and I've got a lot of great feedback. Talked to a lot of people. It's weird for me still when I have to talk to people at shows and they know me because of the podcast. Yeah, you're becoming more famous than me. <laughs> well, wow. that was not what I signed up to do. Because <laughs> anyway. I, 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 I'm still of the thing when somebody says, hey, JR, I think it's somebody from our team or one of the other bands needing something yeah. from me. So I'd, I'd snap my head like, huh? And they're like, hey, can we get a pick? And I'm like, oh, shit, I thought it was somebody needing something. You know? <laughs> so if I look surprised when you holler at me, it's all good. I, I don't mind at all. And uh, yeah, so that was a great run out west. I was glad to get home. Got to be honest, it was a long run. We 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 didn't quite have our our, uh, our game legs back under us. Well, and we had to deal with some uh, some things. Yeah, uh, we won't go into it, but we had some. There's some touch and go moments yeah. for sure. Yeah, fly uh, dates out west. Uh, so, COVID. California's on fire. I mean, just yeah. one thing after. But we did get time. them in, and they were all you know. It was most for the most part really great crowds. Oh yeah, it, it was good. Yeah, we had a good time and look forward to getting back out there. We're gonna take a real short break, and as soon as for our station identification break, as I like to say, I don't know where I learned that. Probably off of on the, radio. On radio. When, yeah. when there was an actual yeah, station w, or, or WKRP in Cincinnati when I was a kid watching uh, yeah. a TV show about a radio station. And we don't have stations, but we'll still call it a station yeah. identification. Yeah. So for whatever. our sponsors and advertisers and everybody on mm. there. Uh, we'll take a quick break right now, and uh, we'll come back. We're going to answer a few questions and look at a few uh, comments and then talk about where we're going um, after this, after we the next couple runs after this. Yeah. So y'all stay tuned. We'll be right back here in a few minutes on the Justin Moore Podcast. I want to give a quick shout-out to Bobcat Company, who really does make a job, any job that is, easier. They got everything from skid steers to compact tractors, utility vehicles, zero turn mowers, and everything in between. Their products are designed to make your lives easier. I like that. Which means spending more time with your family and doing the other fun things you love. Y'all know how big of a deal that is to me. Make sure you visit bobcat.com to see what products might be a good fit for your property. Hey, what's up, guys? Justin Moore here. I want to remind everyone out there listening uh, that my wife, Kate, has an awesome children's clothing boutique in downtown Benton, Arkansas. It's central Arkansas. So if you're local, come see us at 119 West South Street in downtown historic Benton, Arkansas. Uh, Again, that's 119 West South Street in Benton, Arkansas. And if you're not local, we ship everywhere. So... Uh, you can find us at shopthislittlepiggy.com and see all that we have to offer, all that my wife Kate has to offer, I should say. Facebook, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR, and Instagram, you can find us at Shop This Little Piggy AR. But check us out; it's called This Little Piggy, and uh, see what we got to offer. Shopthislittlepiggy.com. Hi, y'all. This is Brandon Bing, singer, songwriter, and whiskey maker. You're tuning into the Justin Moore Podcast. Visit EasyLiquor.com to grab your bottle of Bangtail Whiskey and join the Blue Collar Swaller family today. Follow us on all socials at Bangtail Whiskey for more news and updates. Now pour a jigger and take this a second ride with us. 
Hey gang, as y'all have heard, the Just More podcast has recently teamed up with Wrangler. Wrangler has been an icon in authentic American style around the world for more than 70 years. With a rich legacy rooted in the American West, Wrangler commits to offering unmatched quality and timeless design. As y'all have heard me and Justin talk about on here, George Strait and Alan Jackson, they're Wranglers. We wear Wranglers too. Its collections are also for men and women, children, to look and feel great, inspiring those who wear them to be strong and ready for life every day. Wrangler is available in retail stores worldwide, including brand flagship stores in Denver and Dallas, department stores, mass market retailers, specialty shops, Western Outfitters, and online. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. And you know you've heard it here, and you've seen it on stage, the Justin Moore Podcast. Dang glad to be partnered up with Wrangler because we're big fans and have been for a long, long time. Can't go wrong with a nice pair of Wranglers, y'all. I wear the Wrangler Retro. Uh, Justin wears the black one some. It's just it's my go-to. Uh, I get mine at Academy. So if you're uh, around an Academy or just about anywhere, you can get you a pair of Wranglers, whether you want to look like George Strait, you want to look like JM, or you want to look like me. You can get you some Wranglers, and you can do that. Whether you're in North California or South Alabama or Montana, Texas, Ohio, Wyoming, wherever, a pair of Wranglers will get the job done. Long live Cowboys and Plowboys. For more information, visit Wrangler.com. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Justin Moore Podcast. Thank you all for tuning in each and every week. We sure appreciate it. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention before we left or before we took the break, it was actually in reference to one of our shows we did um, in Oregon. And just want to put this out there because, you know, we talked about the weather. We're trying to give you behind the scenes, behind the curtain type stuff. This one, uh, just I had wrote a note and I reminded myself to talk about it. There was a lady down in the front row, and I have to go through, before the shows we do a security meeting, obviously – Part of that is uh, no professional cameras or video r recording stuff bringing inside shows. As everybody knows, you know, you, you can't bring cameras in and record the show and that kind of stuff. And we go over that, and they usually check cameras and whatnot. Well, I look down, and there's a lady with a professional camera taking pictures right on the corner of the stage. And you have to get a photo pass. Yeah, you got to get a photo that. pass. So, and that's just because we – I don't mean to interrupt yeah, you. I just want to add to uh, – the reasoning behind that is because – you know, it's it's unethical for one, um, but um, it's just not the way we do things. You, you know, you guys or these folks that come out and do that, they're doing it to sell sell the images and make money. Well, we didn't okay that. Yep. And any any time anybody sells something like that, I'm supposed to make money off of it. I don't care about the money. It's just the principle right. of it. Just like when people go and make their own merchandise, you know, I know like some people have shown up at shows and they go, you like my shirt? And they've made it. The enthusiasm behind it and the intent is awesome, but really that's illegal. Yeah. Um, Especially if you sell it. If now, you sell if you, it, yeah. yeah. If you make one, you... Yeah, yeah, if you sell you it. That's what I mean. Your friends are... Yeah, buddies, y'all make shirts for the show. That's one thing. But yeah, it, yeah, I, I should... I, yeah, yeah. Thanks for correcting me yeah. there. But yeah, but a lot of people go sell all that. Right. Well that anything off of it's kind of like the new stuff with the, the college athletes yep. name image and likeness right. Any, anytime you're profiting off of mine or his or anybody else it'd be like me going and taking one of you guys things and just selling it right. well i should pay you for the, for right. that a, a percentage yeah or, or so anyway like, or, I, I just kind of wanted to or like us using explain um, it a little using bit using a song from a, one of brantley's songs as our theme song for our show we got to pay him. Yeah. That's we can't just of. do it. No. So, and, and I say that to say, I, was, I didn't want to get on to the lady. And <laughs> I, I didn't mean to. I just wanted no, to kind of explain yeah, the reasoning behind that it. That was exactly what I was wanting to get out there because I'm not, I wasn't getting on to her. I like just, Ranger, for it. I've got a Ranger shirt. I can't just go make a bunch of Ranger shirts right. and sell them at my shows. Right. Like, that's right. Just, so, and, and I asked her, I said, do you have a photo pass? She said, no. And I was like, how'd you bring your big, because it's a big camera with a lens like the ones we're using to record this. And I, and she said, I don't know. I just came in with it. And I was like, you got to go check that. So I say that to say yes, um, and there and there's also other things in there too. You know, we, you could do some song that's not re released yet, and everybody's got their phones to take pictures and stuff. Just can't be professional, you know. And we have protocol to go through that. Um, and the way to do that is if you are a media outlet, I get requests all the time for the say the uh, you know the the Scranton newspaper or the uh, you know the California uh, web page or whatever it is that goes through our publicist. They send the thing, we approve it. 
I give them photo passes. That way, when you're up there with your camera or you're moving where we tell you and when you can take in pictures and video, they have a pass on that we know who they are. So the security mm. has a sheet that knows that pass is okay to be in certain areas at certain times to do certain things. And it streamlines that. So if they're having to take their attention to deal with, with this, they could not be paying attention to something else. If they know we got the pass on, that means we know they're okay. So the way to do that is reach out, get approved, get a photo pass. If it's if you're with a, a media outlet, it's usually no problem to go through the public. And even if you're an individual that does something for yourself, there's a way to get that approved and written to signed off on so you can use the stuff and do things with it. There's just a way to go about it. I just want to drop that on there. And that's why you can't bring pro cameras in. And it, there is a way, if you want to, you reach out to the publicist, management, we'll put you in touch with the right people for certain things. It can get approved and you can do that. And I don't want to have to get on to nobody because I, I hate being bad cop. I, I, I'm a party guy. I like well, to that's have a not good our time. thing. No. I mean. and, and so I, I didn't. I want to tell that lady, if you're listening, if you watch the podcast, wasn't trying to get on to you. I hope you enjoyed the show. Just uh, got to, there's proper channels to do that. And, and any media outlet or, or individual that wants to do that, just <sighs> send an email to, uh, to the publisher, the management and stuff, or the label, and, and we'll get it through the proper channels and get you approved so you got a pass and I don't have to bother you. And, and you, you can go, you get closer. You can get closer. You can go, yeah, you can go certain places, certain things like that. And usually what we do is we'll say, hey, first four songs yeah, first or whatever. First three songs, or first something 30 like seconds that. to yeah. video. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, <laughs> just so, a, I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. I was going to say, uh, I was going to take it in a little different direction. So if you have anything else to add. I was just, I just, well, to piggyback off of that, and this is a little different subject, but kind of in the same vein. Um, even with like phones and stuff, I, I it, it's mind blowing to me. And maybe because we're a different generation, but I'll see people doing this an, an entire show. Yeah. Like I'm standing up here on stage, me and the guys, and they're watching me through this video, and I'm like. Just watch the show. Yeah. It's right here. Yeah, I, I don't get that I don't either. get that at all. When I go to a show, which I don't go to many that we're not working. I mean, I get you want to have a I I, get, maybe a maybe a song or, or a clip of a song. Exactly. But I'm telling you, I don't remember what show it was, Jr. There was a guy, and I don't care. I, I'm just like, it's got to... It's got to devalue your experience at the actual show. I know yeah. you can go back and watch it later, but. You're not enjoying the actual yeah. show. There was a guy somewhere the other night, and I'm. if you're listening, I'm not, like, hating on you. I just, I don't get it. And I'm like, man, I wonder if he had fun because front row, front row, like, from me to you yeah. to us, you know, like, and I'm going, and he, he the entire show, yeah. he watched through a screen. I'm like. We're, the show's right here. Yeah, yeah the show's happening. <laughs> like, and. I mean, if that's what you want to do, by all yeah. means, do it. I just, I'm like, man, I wonder if this guy's even having fun. Yeah. Or, or if he's doing, I don't, it was, it's wild to me. It really is. And you see so many people doing that. And like I said, when I go to shows, say like Hank Jr., I go see Hank Jr. And that's Jr. totally fine. Do it if you want right. to, but I don't understand. I'm same. And I go to a few Hank Jr. shows a year because he's one of my favorite artists of all time. And uh, his tour manager and his team's good friends. And he's a legend. So I'll, I make an effort a couple times a year to go see Hank Jr. and Alan Jackson and a couple yeah. of that I really. And you'll send me like a 20 second yeah, clip. Yeah. So I'll take a picture, get into the show. I'll take a picture of the stage, the setup, the first song. And then when like, one of my jam jams comes on if he plays something obscure that wasn't expecting i'll get a video clip of it for a minute but i'm even there and i'm trying to watch the show and record it right not looking through my camera because i want to to get the whole grasp of the crowd's reaction the lights the smoke what's going on the band you can't watch it through your phone and usually it's to send to me to brag yeah it's <laughs> or like, something like yeah, i'm yeah. like i mean hey junior you not <laughs> yeah yeah you're you're, you're, uh, you're uh, wiping somebody's ass right now and i'm, <laughs> right. I'm at hank jr yeah. me and terry and our wives are hammered at <laughs> hank jr <laughs> and you're at home watching changing diapers but uh but yeah I, so i do it i get some pictures and some quick vids but not the whole show you know i just i, I just don't get that and if it's one that really hits me I'm not even thinking about getting my phone out. I am trying to enjoy that moment. So, yeah, not hating, but uh, enjoy the show. Live life, guys. Everything, don't don't live life. Hey, and it, it, once it's up here, it's yeah, up there. The memories, the feels. That's what we right. all had before. And people, Anyway, know, I, yeah. again, I, I'm not saying it like, hey, don't do that. I don't care what you do. But, I mean, you paid your money. Do whatever you want to do. 
I just I kind of feel bad for people when they I don't know like that one guy is in my brain seared in my brain like just the whole show and I'm like I mean that's I don't care that's fine yep. I mean if you got it and you want to have if that's why you prefer to do it but I'm like that can't be fun no and to piggyback off of that even something else is we had this recently too um, and it again. It's no sweat off my back. Don't make me any difference. But there will be people out there with signs trying to get my attention. And I'll and I'll nod to them and be like, you know, it may say my first concert, will you sign this? And I'll go, I'll get it. I'll get it before the show's over. Yeah, yeah. Something like yeah. that. And and they, I know that they hear me or they, they see what I'm they, – they get what I'm saying. Right. And they'll still every every song hold it up and try to get my attention again. I'm like, that's got to be tiring just yeah. to hold a sign yeah. up the whole show. Yeah, and, and there's a after I've already communicated to you, I promise you I will sign that, and I do. Yeah, at the end, but of it's the at the end of the show, right? The other thing, like, quite honestly, it's distracting yeah. to me. I remember the other day you hit me. <laughs> there's on the, another. Yeah, you, you hit me on the talk back. You're like, Jr. For God's sake, will you go see what this lady is screaming about. I told the kid, uh, the guy <clears throat> holding the kid, yeah, I'll get the sign. And the lady is just losing her mind. There's an so there's a there's a lady, uh, there's there's a couple or what seemingly is a couple and a and a smaller kid, maybe seven eight years old. The little girl's on top of dad's shoulders, um, and. This lady is screaming. Every time I walk to that side of the stage, this lady is screaming at me. That's another point to bring up. We can't hear y'all. Yeah. We have our in-ears in. We can't hear you. Right. And so you can scream at the top of your lungs. Plus, it's loud as hell. Even if we didn't have those in, I probably wouldn't hear you. Right. But And I'm deaf anyway, so I damn sure wouldn't hear you. <laughs> yeah. But um, huh? <laughs> all they're worried about is getting my attention. Well, that takes away from the other 4,000 people. Right. And their experience. And I'm not trying to be rude. I'm not trying to ignore you. But at the same time, I'm not performing for just one person. Right. I'm performing for everybody that bought a ticket. Right. And she affected the show. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, God bless you, and I love you for being there. But you negatively affected the show for, like, yeah. four songs. So, yeah, like, and I'm in the office trying to get And paid. I will do whatever. For yeah. wh whom, whomever. Yeah, especially when you give them the nods, like, I'll get to it. Yeah, yeah. I'll get it. And usually we and do I that. And I always try, and I try to, in a subtle fashion, do stuff like like nod or wink or thumbs up or whatever yeah. so it doesn't take away from everybody else's experience. But to also be like, yeah, that's fine. Just enjoy the show. We'll get to right. it. And I promise you, I don't forget. Yeah, no, because do you'll, no, you'll hit I don't me up forget. and say, hey, little girl uh, in front of Steph, uh, got a sign, get that. And there's a, a little kid over here with a cowboy and hat, we'll, grab those. And we'll uh, you'll bring them up to me, and I'll, I'll sign them, and you, you'll go give them back to the other people. Um, and so – promise you i'll get to you but just enjoy the show but anyway you yeah, can add more to that well yeah so that particular one yeah you i'm in i'm in the office with the promoter getting paid and all this and i hear you and i'm like I'm, and then you say something again you're like god this lady just is losing her mind just see just get them to calm down so i get over there and i have to go around and through security and through the while the show's happening i'm sure that took away from everybody right on the front row watching me come try to yeah, talk to these and people. i'm of course watching you yeah. i mean you know try not to but and i, mean, I asked the guy and I, so I get to the little girl with the on the guy's shoulders, and I'm like, and he's like, it's her birthday, and I was like, okay, cool. What's her name? He goes, uh, I don't know. So it wasn't even his kid. So he's <laughs> that's what I thought was strange. So he's looking, and then I realized the lady you were talking about. I look over, this lady's eyeballs were jumping out of her head, and she was like, her name's Kaylee. Her name's Kaylee. Her name's Kaylee. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, okay. Or something like I think it was Keely or Kaylee say her name's Kaylee her name's Kaylee her name's Kaylee and I'm like oh, all right well I'll get the sign I'll, I'll get it just go calm you know just enjoy this like you said enjoy the show we'll get to it it's this is the second song of the night I mean we just oh it was going. second third fourth fifth <laughs> yeah. sixth seventh eighth it, it was, dude it was just, so I got it and we got it up there and got it back to them but uh, but yeah so just and the other thing about that the getting our attention is to I get it I mean I do I'm a fan myself but. We're rusty too. Like I'm doing all I can to move around, try to half half ass look kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> I don't right. know that I pull that off. Right. But, uh, remember the words. Yeah, your hit breath. certain yeah. spots. Make sure I'm singing on key. Uh, am I playing the right chords? Am I? And on top of like, I, 
I'm just like my mind is going a yeah. hundred different miles an hour or a hundred miles an hour, a hundred different directions, right. and um, and then Paul comes over thinking, "Hey, do you want to play the uh, blue guitar or the white guitar yeah, on this right, song?" And yeah. you're like, "Oh, uh, yeah, fuck, yeah." I can't even it, think. It's so there's a million things going on because we're trying to do the best, the absolute best show we can do every time we walk on that stage, and this signs and the, the I get it. But if I nod to you yep. and I give you the thumbs up, I promise you, I I promise you, I will not forget it. Yep. Because I tell him, I'll go, hey, don't let me forget to get little girl in the pink cowboy hat or whatever. Yep. Uh, and and so I promise you we won't forget it. But just enjoy, man. If you if you if I give you the nod and the thumbs up, we're gonna get to yep. you. So put the sign down. Don't even worry about it no more. Because I know your damn arms got to be tired. Yeah, and holding everybody it up. and nobody behind you can see. And a lot of guys are doing it for their kids, and I totally get that. Right. But if I give you the thumbs up, you're good. Yeah. Don't worry about it no more. Yeah. Use um, it towards the end of the show. Towards the. Encore. But I'll do it toward the end of the show yep. exactly. And kind of one more thought on that kind of stuff. I've had this happen recently, and a lot of times in the past. I can tell you the absolute worst thing for you to do. We, and not because I won't sign it, but the worst thing to do is take your hat off and just throw it up on the stage. Right. Half and the then time, all of a sudden there's a hat up there. We don't know who it belongs to. Yeah. And and I don't want you to lose your badass, uh, you well, know, yeah, Penzoil hat or, or, who he, who he or, had whatever. or whatever. Yeah. Like, cause, but we don't know who to give yeah. it to. And a lot but of times I'll just Now, take, it's one thing if I grab it right. or if he grabs it, then we know. Right. But just take your hat off and just chunk it on stage. Or a and all boot. This, or a shirt or a boot or a – or, Damn, people! Yes, people throw this up there all the time, for, and I get you want it signed, but if if you don't give it to him or me, we don't know who it belongs right. to. And, it you just, and you're going to be pissed off in about 20 minutes when you want to plug. <laughs> exactly. And so a lot of times I just throw it back to the front of the stage, downstage, mm. and let security try to figure out because I I don't see it. I and of course, if I sign it, everybody's going to claim it. That's oh, yeah. fine. That's oh, fine. Yeah. Well, I'm like, sir, this is not your pink cowboy hat. Right, I know it's not right, your pink right. cowboy hat. This tiny small shirt is not your shirt. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. So there's a way to and, do that. It's towards the end of the show. And we ain't – I hope we're not coming across as like – mad or demeaning about this at all i'm telling you this to help your experience at the show yep because if you leave without your hat that you just tossed on so you'll be like man screw those guys they didn't give me my we don't know y'all yeah, or you go an hour without you or, dip. or you go like this and your arms you can't you can't use them the next day or you're screaming at me and i can't hear you and you don't have a voice the next day i'm trying to help your experience i'm not mad about it at all exactly i, I totally get it and I hope that that's coming across yeah. here. Well, and, that's why, and that's why I talk about the but, camera. That's why we've talked about weather. It's just trying to keep you more informed on how shows actually work so you can have a better inside concert. Inside baseball, yeah, we're so telling you. have you. a better concert experience because at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. Talking about good concert experiences, um, not last night's show in Virginia, had a good time. Got to see. want to give a shout-out real quick to my buddy Tim Materhead mm -hmm. Daltrey and his wife Sarah and their little boys. Got to come see them. I got to see them. He's a friend of mine from high school. I was in the Coast Guard for years out in Alaska. They just relocated. <laughs> Cute little boys. Oh, yeah. got They just relocated back to Virginia. Uh, so it was good to see them uh, and mm -hmm. a couple other uh, – saw – so maybe the biggest Arkansas Razorback fan we know. <laughs> yeah, uh, true. Miss Linda, she came yep. all the way from Arkansas to Virginia. Drove. I Dro thought she flew. Yeah, drove. Drove. 17 hours or whatever she said. And I'm like. Her and it, some family. It, are we not closer than that? Yeah. I know we're in Kansas City soon. Yeah, we got I some mean, Missouri <sighs> days for sure. But so anyway, it's good to see and them. she was working at the uh, St. Jude uh, Benefit as right, well. So, right. So. Uh, She's a sweetheart. She's she really is. Yeah, no doubt. So and it's good, good like, to see everybody out there. Like you said, bigger Razorback fan is me, or bigger and as knowledgeable, if not more knowledgeable, about the team than than me. Which no is, doubt. Hey, that's that's saying something for sure. Well, I was going to do like a speed round of questions and comments, um, so we can get this thing wrapped up. We got to get ready to do a sound check and everything else, and get this show rolling. I think they have some weather rolling they in. Get this show on the road. I hope it avoids us. Uh, oh boy, DP Hoyt here says on Twitter, just a thought I had covering this one. I can hear him singing it and doing it right. Also, Justin thought about a cover album like Alan did. It's uh, it's uh, he sent a picture of Charlie Daniels. What this world needs is a few more rednecks. What this world needs is a few more rednecks. That would be a good one. People uh, out front to take the lead. 
That's our, a good uh, one. Our buddy Austin Husk on uh, Twitter. Uh, Look what I found at a truck stop while fueling up. Had to buy it, and it's been great listening to so far. Th- thanks for t- turning me on to this with the Justin Moore podcast. He sent a picture. It's the uh, audio book of Never Look at the Empty Seats. Love Charlie it. Daniels. Um, you uh, know, I, there was a show we did recently that uh, because of the fires and and the COVID spike, there weren't as many people there as what has been at most places. And I literally told myself when I walked on stage and, no, and noticed that, I said, don't worry about those people yep. that ain't here. Worry about the ones that are here. I literally thought that in my head. Yep. Never look at the stage. empty seats because that's not the ones you came to play for. It's the ones that spent good money and took day off work, got a yep. babysitter to come to the shows. Uh, I can't pronounce this name. Guanacifi double zero which i answered him this on twitter but he says uh hey guys awesome show in redmond had a question do you have a favorite episode of cocaine and rhinestones from either season mine was the one about bobby gentry keep doing what you're doing i'd say the judge was probably my favorite that was my top one the kershaw's i really like but all of them are great i mean the, yeah the, and he's the, back to doing that yep, isn't he? second season's out now it's some really really intriguing stuff it's a lot more professional it's insight. the total opposite of this yeah podcast. it's like an npr <laughs> documentary on each subject in country music kind of uh, reminds me of a pbs thing yes or something. exactly and uh tyler i met him when he was 16 he was out playing with his dad when i worked for wayne mills we opened for him and i hadn't talked to him in a long time and i'm sure he hey doesn't. and uh, uh we're thinking a, a DAC yes. right now. By Speaking the way. of that, uh, we heard our, our buddy old David Allen Coe's got the COVID right now. We're hoping he pulls through it. Shout out to my buddy Laney Strickland, who's uh, his new guitar player. We're supposed to start their tour this past week and um, not getting to go right now. We're hoping for a speedy recovery for old DAC. That's who we need to get on here. Yes. Yes. I mean, yeah. we, you ever, we ever told that when he texted you, we said that? I think I did. Uh, or when he called me? When, or, when he, or when he texted you at the end of every text. When oh. He text you. Yeah, every time he texts me, uh, he, he, he uh, I guess, finishes it or yeah. ends it with DAC. Yeah, like you don't know it's David Allen Yeah, Alan I don't Coe. know if it's David Allen Coe, but I, I didn't, did we tell the story of when I was, uh, when we first had Small Town USA had first gone number one? I don't know. And it, I think I've told this story, but I'll tell it again if I, if I, just in case I haven't. But So we're in Kansas City. I feel like we've talked about Kansas City a lot lately, but we're, that's where we were. <sighs> phone starts ringing i look at it i don't recognize the number don't have it saved and if i don't have it saved i don't answer um and goes to my voicemail hey justin david allen co just want to thank you son for putting my name in your song um you know whatever mm-hmm. uh, small town usa so i i'm like that ain't, that ain't david allen co so i call back he answers and I'm like, who who the hell is this? What do you? Yeah, you think it's I, one of your buddies? I think it's one of my buddies <laughs> like playing a joke on me. And then he starts talking. I'm like, that's David Allen Coe. <laughs> I'm like, I am so sorry, sir. I, yeah. You know, and I go through the whole thing. But yeah, and ever since then we've been good buddies. And yep. I never forget. Soon after that, we were playing a a rodeo, and we were opening for him because we didn't. All we had was Small Town USA at the time that anybody knew us by and he's david allen co mm-hmm. and we were in texas playing a rodeo and i'm out front like in the crowd watching the show right because nobody really even knows me i mean i'd played and but ball cap on <sighs> and over the mic for the encore his encore he goes where's justin <laughs> justin where you at get up here and uh, sing with me you're out there drinking a beer. At yeah, and then, so I I sprint to the side stage and and uh, I go I ask his production guy at side stage. I said, like, "What are we gonna do?" He, they go, "You never know. Just <laughs> just be prepared for anything." Hang on. And I'm like, "Oh no!" Like because if you don't know it, then he's gonna like be like, "You little twerp," right. or whatever. You know, but that's what in my head I'm yeah. thinking. I, he may not be that way, but um, dude, he does some super obscure like bob seger song or something and i know it Ooh, thank god i yeah. know, some rock song right. it might not have been seger but and i know it uh um like thank god david allen and then it, shoot me and then we do then it goes right into like we're an american band 
You know, and I'm like, all right, I got that one. And then he does one of his or something, and I know it. And I'm like, thank God. <laughs> you know, because they were like, I don't know, man. You just got to be ready for whatever. That's basically and what so, I tell our production team every night when you go, when you do an encore. They're like, what are they going to play? And I was like, uh, I think it's going to be dust on the bottle. Then just hang on. Yeah. <laughs> or or so, Vidalia, then hang on. Yeah. So. Yeah, we anyway. So Cold. we we become really good friends actually, yeah. and that we text periodically. I can text that Joker at two thirty in the morning. We're listening to if that ain't country, it'll hair lip the Pope. And I I sent hey listening to listening to DAC post show, and he'll text me back. It's the wildest thing. But but to your point on the encore though, um, yeah, this and some more inside baseball on the shows. We don't know what we're doing for the encore. Everything else we know we're doing because we have to have it timed right. And um, we leave the encore uh, wide open. So, I mean, we – and how long we play an encore is determined by you guys. Right. I mean, what was it two, three weeks curfew, ago? curfew. Sometimes curfew. Yeah, curfew, curfew obviously. Things like but, that. but if we don't have a curfew, that's determined by you guys um and how you know my voice is and do we have any shows we have left and all that stuff but you know um i don't know it was three four weeks ago might have been when we were up uh uh in that place where we got the lobsters or something maybe uh, there's our ice Hampton maker beach might have been up there i don't know it doesn't matter but we put we did like a 40 minute encore oh yeah <laughs> so you just never know. If we don't have a if we don't have a uh, curfew and you guys are still rocking, hell, we'll just keep playing. That's right. And the band guys got a real cool instrumental they've been starting the encore yeah. with lately. That's pretty yeah. cool. If you're at a show, just make sure to catch that. that that's been really <laughs> fun lately. Uh, and we've been playing some stuff in the encore lately that a lot of people don't know. But if we play it and you don't know it, you should know it. That's why we're playing it. That's right. Go find it. Um, my, my our buddy Duncan Robertson, him and his twin brother have a great podcast that I actually was a guest on um, a couple of months ago on their fiftieth um, uh, episode. Y'all check them out. He says, "Love what Jr. said a couple of weeks ago on the Justin Moore podcast. Must be present to win." I'll say that about the encore. It ties into that. If the show starts coming down, you haul butt out of there. You might miss something. So and you oh, must yeah. be present to win these extra songs Jay's talking about. Work hard, play hard. Yeah, you too, Duncan. Y'all stay out of trouble. Hit me up. I'll do another one. Let's jump on and do another one here in a couple of weeks when I get home. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Let's see what else here. Congrats to Justin. Oh, something else we need to talk about here. Congrats, Justin Moore. Uh, love the Justin Moore podcast and JR the Handler. Congrats on another number one hit. Your 10th yeah. number one song. Congrats, buddy. Thanks, man, uh, and thank you guys out there for for being such an instrumental part of that. Um, not only this one, but all of them. Uh, I mean, had uh, somebody at the golf tournament uh, this past week asked me, "Hey, man, did you ever think you'd have ten number ones?" <laughs> Lord no, Lord no. Um, I I've said this in interviews the past couple of weeks about it. Um, I don't, I don't have any explanation as to why, you know, we've been so successful for so long. You know, this is uh, this is 14 years into this thing, uh, which is just so hard to believe. And um, <clears throat> you know, I'll tell you how long it's been. I was on a conference call, Zoom call, as you know, earlier, Jr. with my record label, and I was brought on and introduced as the longest tenured artist at our record label group wow and i was like whoa i was taken aback um made me feel old but at the same time it's it's such a huge blessing and honor to be able to say that and just unreal um but i've said in, in interviews uh recently that uh, you know I, I came out at a time uh with a group of artists that were just incredibly um talented uh you know hauser and it was right after luke and um i mean hauser's just one of them jamie johnson came out right around the same time with the in color stuff and and i don't you know there's so many more talented people out there than me 
that for whatever reason haven't had the sustained success on radio that we've had and i don't know what to attribute it to but i'm damn proud of it and i and i certainly appreciate uh not only radio but but you guys out there for it and yeah uh number 10 and um hopefully we'll get number 11 soon yes sir so. sounds like it and hopefully this next one will ring the bell as well and uh, it's wild when you think about too like We've had 10 number ones, and this, in no way is this meant to be boastful, but we've had 10 number ones and and 10 other big hit records that were top 15, top fives, top tens, to, you know, that were big hits. Um, mm-hmm. And quite honestly, I never thought I'd get to the place where, like, we have to leave hit songs out of the show, but we don't play a couple of hit songs in the show every night. You know, just because we don't really have time, and that's just a huge blessing to be able to say that. So, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Um, trying to look through some other uh, questions we had here. Um, got one here from uh, Hog Wild Brad on Instagram. Jr. Question for the Justin on the podcast: Is it difficult to sing songs using the house band at the Opry? I always wondered about that. Uh, Brad Bettis from Royal Arkansas. I know the other week we did that. You, you and Roger played with the opera yeah. band in Nashville. It, you know, it, I, I wouldn't say it's difficult because um, uh, they're, I mean, they're total pros and they played the song uh, great. But it, it's different for sure. I mean, you, you know, um, kind of the way I would describe having your own band, and I think this is for any artist is is kind of like your uh, uh your blankie uh, you know what yeah. i mean like it's it's your it's your comfort zone and uh you know we spend so much time on stage together our own bands that they know my tendencies um we can you know roger and i have played together for got 15 years something like that yep. so i can look at him i don't even have to give him a certain look it's just i look at him and he knows what I'm thinking, mm-hmm. and vice versa. And, you know, if I, you know, he, he watches me, uh, and he's not the only one. They all do. Um, I'm just using him as an example but because uh, you brought him up. But, um, you know, they know that if I'm doing some certain something, whatever that is, uh, to, to, to loop the intro, for instance, which means continue playing it. I'm not ready yet. Right. Or um, at the end of a song, if I do something with a, a guitar lick or something, they know, I mean, let's extend this. Or, so you don't get that when you play with a house band, so to speak. Uh, those guys are incredibly talented and, and total pros. But So it's not difficult, but it's certainly different. And, you know, I, it's nothing against those guys but i'd much prefer to play with my own band uh, just like anybody else would any artist right. would i mean it'd be like um you know kevin durant uh or any other pro uh hopping on another team i mean yeah you can do it and succeed it takes yeah but but rep- repetitions but, where you but you good. know he knows now you know he's got who harden and who Kyrie. Who, Kyrie Blake you know you can no look pass and you know where they're going to be in basketball even when i was growing up i would do something and you know one of my teammates would know what i was going to do where i was going what spot i was going to be in they didn't have to look they knew on a fast break i was going to spot up in the corner right uh, you know what i mean yeah. it's just one of those kind of deals yeah yeah i thought it was cool with the opry thing though when um because they have they have a, a arrangement of players and then a female backup singer yeah that was really cool that was cool on the songs for sure yeah, that was so, really yeah. and the thing about them is and I, and I guess you're saying that too they're all super pro oh so yeah. it's like you know there's nothing Total to worry pro. about but it's just different when it's your pros it's same as basketball right. it's pros mm-hmm. on all of them it's just a different set of pros yeah, and you're for more, sure you get dialed in i mean even you and i playing basketball we've played with each other long enough like you and i can kind of know what's going on what's yeah. up with each other and know where you're effective from and you know what i'm good right. at and that kind of stuff uh got one here from Corey barker uh my daughter brighton turns six september 9th she loves justin if we can get a shout out that would be amazing love the podcast can't wait to see y'all in oklahoma or texas again hey brighton Happy birthday. Happy sixth birthday on September 9th. So Happy this, birthday. That's should, awesome. Yep, should get out a little early. September 9th? September 9th. 
couple days for you? Yep, two days for me. I, you're just a little bit older. Yeah, than just her. a hair, just a hair. So, uh, happy birthday, Brighton. Let's see here. We got here. Uh, da, 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 da. Awesome. Uh, this is from uh, Seabake two one two four. Awesome podcast, brother. Justin is without a doubt the best current artist out there. Received. A few high fives autographs from Justin from the front row. Met Roger while he was watching Tracy Lawrence open, and the podcast makes it seem like you guys are buddies of ours. That's awesome. Yep. That's That was totally our goal, and, and thank you for the kind words, man. Appreciate Absolutely. that. Um, let's see. Hey, if you like us, that's awesome. If you don't, hey, all good. Yeah. <laughs> this What you see is what you get. That's right. This, we're not putting this on. I get, and also wonder here too. I get a lot of requests for people wanting doing meet and greets and stuff. We're not doing currently doing meet and greets until this pandemic and this uh, next wave and surge and all kind of <laughs> dies down. So bear with us. We are we will get back to doing meet and greet meet and greets again in the future. It's just not right now. And that's for our safety and y'all's. Yeah, and the I venue mean, really. regulations. We just don't want to do anything to hang up any of these shows and not let them happen. So and quite a, and honestly, like um, you know, we had a situation a couple of weeks ago that we had to navigate through. Um, the thing it's a little more inside I info for you but um, you know if if we have crew members even who we're around uh, who say test positive shows get canceled for two weeks yep so it's it's not that we're necessarily concerned about our own health too much I mean we are to an extent yep. um, but we're concerned about you guys but also, we get shut down for two weeks. Nobody out here gets a paycheck. Yep. And so that affects the families. And and so there's a lot more to it than just, right. you know, we just said, oh, no, we ain't going to do it. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of thought goes into these yeah, and decisions. we've been, and we've limited everything. Like as far as like on show days now, I mean, basically we hang out. Justin doesn't leave the bus. The band doesn't leave their bus except for to get food and back. And the crew minimizes their interactions with the local hands and local crews. Yeah, uh, and that's just to to keep down you know the 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 interaction or spread if something were to go down. And every, a lot of people got kids out Better here. Better safe than sorry. Better safe is than kind sorry of the for now. And, taken. And, and and you know we we're not going to take a stand either way on the whole vaccine and a, a negative test for a show. That's that's individual venues and promoters and towns. And, and we of, and and quite honestly, we we have people in our camp who have difference of opinions. Yep. And it is what it I is. Mean, it's just for everybody's safety. And for now, until – and it's, that's the thing. I, nothing is what it was before, but it will get back to that. So it's just uh, it's just a matter of time until everything calms down and, and you know, we get the, the hospital beds emptied out and get, get some people back healthy and get on that downward spike like we're going to here soon. And JR sent, sent me and some of our management guys a, a great article about that exact thing. I read it uh, yesterday. Um, really – really compelling argument as to why we're going to get back to normal yep yeah um, it's, it's just part thought of it was it. good yeah it was um it was good and I, I'll, I'll try to get that posted up there for everybody to read it was really well thought out and it was by one i think it was mit or one of our ma main major uh resources here in america for as far as medical stuff um speaking of, of of america and uk which the uk i was talking to our agent yesterday the uk he was talking to their our london mm -hmm. office over there and they're back to doing big shows and they're on the downward spike they're a couple four five weeks ahead of us so Hopefully that's where we're heading. In yeah. another month, we'll be where where the UK is now, and that made me think of our uh, our buddy here on Instagram, Scott Ritzberg, uh, hits us up and says, "Hey Jr., my name is Scotland, and I live in Scotland, UK. Huh. I want to ask a question for the JM podcast. What do you and Justin think of the NFL London games, and do you think the London games will work with the US NFL fans?" I like watched them. I don't know. It's it's. I, I don't know how the traveling goes over there. If people, if a lot of people from America travel, I know. Um, last time I watched it was two teams that weren't doing very well that year. I don't know how well attended they are, yeah. but um, I, quite honestly, um, I I don't think uh, for people over here it really makes. And this not meant to be negative. I don't think people really care because when you're watching on TV. All you care about is the game. Yeah, as long as it's and you can kind of care less where it's at. Yeah. I think it's neat. I do too. I mean, I, like I would it. love to go to one. Same. I think and that'd if be I was there, and really a fan cool. Of yeah. American football, it would be awesome. Yeah, I saw, I, and I know they did one in Mexico City two yeah. years ago as well. I mean, I, th I think it's really cool. I just don't think a lot of people 
I don't even know if people really know much because they don't do a great job of promoting that yeah. over here Doesn't at least. Seem like yeah. Um, unless you're unless it's your team. Like if my Saints yeah, were right. playing in it, oh, I'm definitely going to make right. sure to watch it. And I, but I, you're going to watch it regardless. Regardless, is the and point. Then, and I, I guess I'm trying. And to I make. don't know if people will travel from that from here. I'm sure some super fans. do. It would be cool to do. Would I would awesome. love to do that. Yes, yeah, st- st- book the Steelers Saints game yeah. in a couple of years, and we'll come play some and we'll shows. Come play that. Well, Which that, we talked about that too. Well, that's the next question Scotland has. Does Justin want to play in the UK? He has a huge amount of fans Absolutely. here in the UK. We talked, JR and I talked about that, what, a week ago? Yeah, yeah, you um, and I were talking. All and there, yeah. um, we, it's something we've wanted to do for a long time. We've just, I don't know why, we just never have done it. Um, I, I think it's one of those deals, Scotland, where, like, I don't know if it's the fear of walking out into an empty venue or like because we've never done it so you just think well nobody cares but i know that's not the case yep, um, these songs chart over there as well and all so that. um i would love to go over there for two three weeks and do we talked about that we talked about going to australia yep. um everywhere in europe um i would love and i would love to go to you know to to those places yep. i mean it would be a lot of fun and i'm a I'm a history guy, oh, yeah, me and, too. as I well as you, and so you and I would eat it up. Oh, yeah. I'd go over there if we just broke even, to be right. quite honest with and you. And that's what we talked about. It'd be cool when, when, when like, South and Klein get just a hair bigger. And they'll remember, remember it. Remember it. I'd take, take all my take family. Take our wives and, and everybody. Yeah, because your, your dad was stationed over there or, uh, you know, grew up some. Uh, some he grew life. up a... a he was just outside of London, at the Air Force Base yeah. there. So, so yeah, Navy so base. definitely, Scott. We are we have had talks about that, and we're going to talk in the future about. We're going to make a better effort to talk with the people who can actually right. implement that right. plan. And I've actually um, got a new uh, travel agent I've talked with lately that can facilitate all that stuff because I know our buddy Luke Combs went over and did some shows before the pandemic, and I've talked with their travel agent to. to so we're the the wheels are in motion. It may be a while as our wheels turn slow. Well, on especially music road, but with all this, yeah. Now, I mean, but um, yeah, yeah I, w- I definitely would love to do yeah, that, well, so and we're gonna make that happen yep, at some point yep, for it, sure. It just may be another year or two, but definitely gonna make that happen. And I'm gonna do one more here, and we'll get done with the Q and A comments for today. But y'all continue to use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast so I can get these. Um, Instagram and Twitter, I'm JR the Handler. That's Justin Cole Moore on Instagram and Twitter. If his doesn't have the blue check mark, it's not him. And y'all know me. I use the lightning on everything. I got one account for each. That's it. No side accounts. Uh, but this one comes from our buddy Kevin Martin. Um, he said, Hey, Justin, JR, I know y'all haven't done any Mount Rushmore segments lately, but who would be y'all's Mount Rushmore of TV slash movie Western actors? I thought that was an excellent. We have That's it. a dang good. Yeah, one. and a, and I know some people have, have sent some stuff of, of Mount Rushmore. We we kind of did get off of it the past you know couple of episodes, but um, this is a good one. I thought we we could definitely spark this up. Yeah, I, I mean at the top of the list, everybody's gonna have the same one, right? Uh, maybe John Wayne. I mean, well, this was me and Mater were talking last night. For me, my first number one, which John Wayne historically is the the figure you stick with the Western cowboy guy, but. I know you and I probably have the one. I mean, Robert Duvall. I mean, yeah. it's hard for me to go past Robert yeah. Duvall in anything he's done, much less when he plays a Western character, because he was actually friends with a bunch of country stars, and he's you know Texas guy. And uh, for me, uh, yeah, that's two of du- mine. And then uh, James Arness has got to be on there ooh, for me I didn't because even put that one in there because I'm. Uh, I, I've always loved that show. Yeah, I mean, we're watching Gunsmoke. We were watching Bonanza. I think Gunsmoke's on now. But Gunsmoke is probably my favorite one of those old. Yeah, I mean uh, Michael Landon TV and, shows. Michael Landon in um, in Bonanza was good. I mean Hoss Cartwright, all those guys. But you got to think Eastwood. Eastwood, yeah. I mean, you know, um, so y'all use that's the hashtag. That's a really good. That's question. a good one. Y'all use uh, the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast, and we'll get a list going. Who was the actor on the Rifleman? Oh, that's Chuck Connors. I mean, he's and, and fun fact: Chuck Connors was one of the last, maybe the last athlete to play not one, not two, but three sports in college, collegiate. He was an All-American in football, baseball, and basketball at UC, I want to say USC wow. or UCLA or one of those. Yeah, the great Chuck Connors. Um, but yeah, Robert Duvall, man, he's been so cool. many good ones. Um, I mean, and, and you know, I mean, Kevin Costner. 
Kevin Costner is vastly underrated in that role. He in Open Range, which is one of my favorite and Westerns, and his latest, it, it, yeah, and the series uh, with yeah. uh, uh, Yellowstone. Yellowstone, I know. And so, uh, gosh, I mean, and then Val Kilmer, even for that one role, yeah. I mean, Kurt Russell, Kurt Russell. <laughs> I mean, oh, Sam Elliott, Sam Elliott, who we've met. Yeah, golly. That's a pipe, tough pipe, one. Hey, Cody, pipe that picture into me, you and Sam Elliott, if you got it, when we met him in, in D.C. Yeah, a couple wow. of years ago. Yeah. I wow. Mean, so many good ones. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, mean Lonesome. Ricky, Ricky Schroeder. Yeah. Lonesome Dove. <laughs> he nailed it on that. Yeah. Um, Duvall was Duvall in that. Duvall was in that as well. Uh, who else was in that? There was another big actor um, in that. Hey, you got to throw Danny Glover was in there. Danny Glover's a good cowboy yeah. when he steps in for the role, yep. which he does a great in anything. I'm a big Danny anything. Glover fan. Yeah. yeah. Um, a bunch of them. That's that's tough. And yeah. these are, you know, these are spanning, you know, from, from the back. Generations. And then because, you know, my granddad would say Gene Autry. Oh, yeah. And it's done. The one I was going to say, too, the show I watched just about every day growing up was uh, The Lone Ranger. I'm not sure yes. who that actor was, but. But the Lone Ranger was like my guy yeah, at that point. I can't think either. Um, and, yeah, the guy who did uh, – well, I guess it's what? Davy Crockett? The guy who did the Davy yeah. Crockett TV show back in the day? He I mean, good. even uh, – uh, we we just watched Smoking the Bandit again. I mean, Bert. I mean, yeah. That, I mean, that's not – I don't know that that's a Western, but it's close. Yeah. I mean, it, you know – Cowboy, I Cowboy. guess. Cowboy, yeah. There's a lot Outlaw, of them. Outlaw, whatever. So use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. Send us in your Mount Rushmore of uh, TV and movie Western actors or actresses um, because there's a bunch of them out there, and I know we're missing a whole pile that we can't think of off the top of our head. Now, we purposely didn't talk about this before we recorded <clears> today, <throat> so we'd be spur of the moment and fresh. But, yeah, good, great. Uh, Kyle, thank yeah, you great. for that good one, buddy. Um, hey, before we get off of here um, – Hey, some sad news uh, to pass along. You and I haven't talked about this because I just got this text. Um, you know, we're we're a pretty tight knit community as far as there's Chuck Connors right there. Yep, there you uh, go. pretty tight knit community as far as um, camps, uh, mm -hmm. artists, crew, bands, all that. Uh, we all know each other. We all run with each other. We all you know pull for each other, see each other. <laughs> really sad news to pass along uh baja yeah um with keith urban uh, he's his production manager uh, uh he passed away did he yeah um so our thoughts and prayers go out to the keith <laughs> urban camp and um i just we just know him by baja yeah uh, but um legendary stage manager terrible I mean, just tragic accident happened a, a few days ago yep um and um he, yeah he was urban's before that he was with brooks and dunn and before I'm, that randy travis i met him with brooks and dunn uh funny story actually met him with brooks and dunn i was out playing with a show with brooks and dunn as easy top omaha nebraska i'll never forget it we uh we got a call the day before the show uh, can justin go open for brooks and dunn as easy top in omaha nebraska we're like Mm -hmm. uh, yes uh, of course if we have to walk but we took a van a 12 passenger van and a trailer 17 hours i'll never forget it and i was told which this is customary i don't know why it is it shouldn't be but it is it's not for us but uh opening act you cannot use the catwalk can't right. go down the catwalk well what do i do i'm 23 years old i'm like f that i'm going out crowd was rocking i'm going out the catwalk and and baja jumped my uh manager's ass said about to whip his ass if i don't if get him don't off, get the, off catwalk. the catwalk <laughs> and so after that uh he apologized to us and bought us a beer yep a great that's, guy that's how it and we works. kept kept up with him um but uh just a tragic accident yeah. he, he you just never know man that's why you got to be prepared to meet god in my opinion yep. uh, uh so yep. talk to if him you don't know day. the lord i would encourage you to get to know him yep. um he fell off the stage hit his head on a, a speaker um yep. and boom gone yep. that's why i always tell people about backstage everybody wants to come backstage it's uh it's not all glamorous back there there's cables and wires and stuff <laughs> everywhere and stuff hanging and it's like somebody had said in something i think it was maybe in a in, uh 
think it was William Lee Golden's book I read. He said something about backstage. He said it's a lot like backstage at a rodeo. Watch where you're stepping because it might be some, you know, what yeah. you step in. So, so anyway, uh, thoughts and prayers go yeah. out to Keith and, and his camp and certainly Baja's family and, yes. and friends. Just a terrible, terrible, terrible. tragic accident. And uh, another sad passing um, uh, in Arkansas. Um, gal who worked for the ACMs, um, Cabot, Arkansas, uh, who I met and she was always great to me in my career, uh, just passed away of brain cancer, uh, at 52 years old, uh, Lisa Lee, yep. um, just, just terrible. Yep. Uh, and so hate to end on a, a yeah. sour well, and down and note, but I just, I, yeah. I want to say and thoughts and prayers out to those folks and their families. Yeah. And we've had, <sighs> we, and unfortunately we've, it's, it, we've had a lot of those again. want to say, uh, also, um, thoughts and prayers go out to Jason Aldean and his camp. Yeah, that's right. Uh, yeah, Rhino from that. his camp just passed away. Unfortunately, his longtime buddy, I think from high school, that was his head of security yep. for years and years. It was. Yeah. So I want to say shout out to them. And also, I don't know if we mentioned on the last podcast, but you just mentioned them. Um, the great Dusty Hill from ZZ Top. Yeah. Just passed away. I, I only met him one time. We were hanging out on Billy's Couldn't bus. Couldn't have been nicer. Yeah, and I went out to have a cig. And next thing you know, me and Dusty had, it's back when I smoked, I don't anymore. But Couldn't me and Dusty had a cig and just shot the bull and couldn't have been cooler. And then he just passed. And then the great Tom T. Hall, one of our favorite songwriters yep. and entertainers ever, just passed. And it's just, uh, you just never know. And, um, yeah, that I've, I, I want to say, too, while we're doing that, y'all throwing up prayers out there, uh, throw them up for everybody, and definitely our troops, all these people we just mentioned, their families and coworkers and friends and uh, my buddy Ballard back home um, in Orange Beach hope he pulls through he had a massive heart attack a few days ago uh, so hopefully he's going to pull through and I hope he does so y'all send a little prayer out for my buddy Ballard too if you don't mind um, but yeah and want to get uh, we'll get off the, the sad stuff there but it's inevitable y'all that's why you yeah need just to, wanted to mention yeah, those. talk to the Lord those. yeah for sure um, but shows we've got coming up as this airs we've got another run of shows coming up next week we want to mention Monday uh, this will already pass, but we're going to the New York State Fair in Syracuse. Then we're going up to the Stark County Fairgrounds on September 2nd, Canton, Ohio. Uh, Y'all make sure to check that out. Uh, the Devon Lakeshore Amphitheater, I just talked with them. That looks like that's going to be a fun show up in Decatur, Illinois on September 3rd. Uh, September 4th, we're going to be in Elkhorn, Wisconsin at the Walworth County Fairgrounds. Then on September 5th, we'll be at the Arts, Beats, and Eats Festival in Royal Oak, Michigan. Um, and then uh, we were talking about Kansas City. We're going back to the Power and Light District in KC on September 9th. So y'all go to Justin's website, justinmoremusic.com. Uh, check out all those dates. Uh, you can get tickets from there. There's links to that, links to the podcast stuff, links to the videos. Um, for you two people who don't, and if you want to chat with me, I tell people this on Instagram and Twitter, go to jrthehandler.com. Use my chat page on there. It's easier for me. I get notifications. It's easier for me to communicate through there than Instagram or Twitter even. But use them all. Just use the hashtag Justin Moore Podcast. Uh, and also on the on my just jrthehandler.com site, I need to get it updated but i put all of our youtube videos from each week on there so if you don't have youtube or you're new to that just go on your phone go to jrthehandler.com click on the the video you want to watch and it'll take you to youtube and you can watch from that way so until next week gang i've been jr the handler as usual this is justin moore thank y'all for tuning in each and every week we had a blast i hope you guys still enjoying the podcast use the hashtag justin moore podcast to let us know you do and uh, like i said we're going to try to get to this campground and get set up and record something have it out on time this week so same country music podcast same country music podcast time so absolutely thank you guys for tuning in it was fun as always hopefully you enjoyed it again sorry we're late next week we won't be late promise you that's right thank y'all we'll see y'all soon all right take care hey guys today's podcast is sponsored by bobcat company check them out at bobcat.com for any of you first time listeners out there at the end of each of our episodes uh, I like to do a little reading out of a book I've had that I've got a lot of use out of over the years. Uh, the book is by Mr. Charlie Daniels, uh, and the book is called Let's All Make the Day Count, The Everyday Wisdom of Charlie Daniels. Number 18, precious wisdom. Do not forsake wisdom, and she will protect you. Love her, and she will watch over you. Proverbs 4.6. I believe we are born with a certain amount of innate wisdom. It is the kind that develops our natural instincts to walk, eat, and talk. But other wisdom can only be learned, and it seems that some people, like me for instance, can only learn the hard way. I gained the wisdom that I'm not good with machinery by cutting off part of my finger and breaking an arm. 
I'm wise enough now to avoid close contact with things that have a bunch of moving parts. True wisdom usually comes from those experiences and is only wisdom if it sticks with you and becomes part of you and your decision-making process. Wisdom always involves truth and honesty and having the courage to admit to yourself that no matter how much something appeals to you, it may not be good for you. The easiest way is not always the right way. So much wisdom is just common sense. The humility to be objective about all things and the willingness to admit when you're wrong. Live by something I call the cowboy logic. Water never runs uphill. Two and two is always four. If there's smoke, there's fire somewhere. Let's all make the day count.